am invisible naipal is talk to agree with good morning and a warm welcome to one and all present in this online session distinguished professor vice chancellor university of hyderabad dr aparo podile garu respected dean professor chakravarti garu respected senior professors professors staff dear participants on behalf of the school of computer and information sciences university of hyderabad myself naginder kumar welcomes a heartfelt morning to all to this online fdp on internet of things this online fdp program is jointly organized by school of computer and information sciences university of hyderabad and aict atal training and learning academy the duration of this online fdp is 5 days and mainly focuses on understanding the intricacies involved in the development of applications related to applying artificial intelligence on the internet of things applications iot itself is an interdisciplinary area where it consists of the fields like electronics instrumentation data communication networking and the data processing so there is a lot of scope for this and a lot of explorations are going on in this present digital era so in this sessions you will be exploring the various intricacies and the various details required to perform and to apply new smart ideas for various applications related to internet of things i'm sure that you are eagerly waiting for this day and may i now request Uh, professor aparo garum vice chancellor university of hyderabad to grace this occasion and address the august participants who are present in this online session may i request professor aparo garu please to take over the session please good morning everybody hope i am audible yes sir yes sir professor chakravarti the dean school of computer information sciences dr nagendra kumar uh the coordinator of this fdp and uh, the participant uh, faculty colleagues from uh, school of computer information sciences and participants from different parts of the country first of all uh, i am very happy in the, today morning about this uh, fdp that is being organized for 5 days by the school of computer information sciences and the lead taken by dr nagendra kumar in approaching the aict to support this particular event i would like to thank the aict on behalf of university of hyderabad for supporting this event and i am looking forward to see that most of you would benefit the participants would benefit with this five day fdp uh, on a very very uh, interesting topic uh when uh, the other day i was uh, trying to understand something about science technology and innovation for the uh, self reliant india there were about eight nine different technologies which were uh, up, which appeared as trending technologies and out of those eight technology all of them of course interestingly all of them are uh, the um, computer science related uh, technologies uh, which appeared as trending technologies and among those when i looked at again the 
IoT is in the top three. The Internet of Things is considered as one of the topmost uh, uh, technology that has a lot of uh, benefits that can be uh, utilized by this society. And uh, with such kind of uh, opportunity for the expansion of this particular branch of uh, computer science, wherein you will have uh, the devices talking to them, each other um, by different media. You, you have all kinds of media, even through Wi-Fi, these devices talk and uh, the scope of the technology seems to be seamless. Therefore, and then the another one that was uh, you know, among the trending technologies I noticed was uh, uh, obviously AI. And the third, the most important that I found was data science. And uh, AI in itself is a huge, uh, has a huge potential of its own, which we have already visualized. And uh, what I learned when I was talking to Dr. Naginder about uh, when he talked to me about this FDP, and also when I interact with a couple of uh, colleagues, uh, senior colleagues in computer science, including our Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Agarwal, when individually each of these technologies like IoT and AI have great potential and uh, are most of sought after technologies uh, for. Uh, to ease the, uh, or to improve the standards of living and provide better solutions for some of the day-to-day -day issues. What is more appealing to me is that when these two combine, if one can combine these two technologies like uh, AI and IoT, the effect is not simply a cum uh, additive effect, it is something like enhancement effect. When AI and uh, IoT can come together, and if these two technologies are used in combination, the benefits are going to be many, many more. And therefore, I feel it is very appropriate that uh, Dr. Nagender and the School of Computer Information Science at the University of Hyderabad, my university, has taken this initiative to organize this five-day workshop and uh, I, I, they, I do not know whether that estimate is uh, right or Nagendra would like to correct it at some stage. Uh, I understand by 2025, 40 billion IoT devices are likely to be in use. Is something like that is an estimate of, uh, I was reading at some place. So huge, huge uh, requirement and potential. And it is for us how we learn and we make people learn. And some of those of you who are now getting acquainted with this, we look forward for a uh, chain reaction in that uh, you transmit this to uh, some more people and make more people empowered with this technology and uh, the applications of this technology. And therefore, I again would like to congratulate the School of uh, Computer Information Science and particularly the coordinator, Dr. Naginder, for all this uh, initiative. And I wish good luck for the proceedings for the next five days. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for uh, enlightening us and making sure uh, that uh, we, the importance of uh, uh, combining the AI and the IoT together and uh, the future is almost uh, in this particular two domains so definitely we will strive to uh, contribute to a maximum extent. And of course, this learning program will definitely enable us to have such kind of uh, developments to move further. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, may I now request uh, Professor Chakravarti Bhagwati Garu, Dean School of Computer and Information Sciences uh, to address the participants on this particular occasion. Thank you, Nagender and uh, Professor Appara, Honorable Vice Chancellor of the University, then uh, Dr. Nagender and Dr. Uh, Satish Sridama, then all my colleagues in the School of Computer and Information Sciences, as well as the 
colleagues in the university and also all the participants i welcome you all it's a great pleasure to see you all here early in the morning on a monday and uh, what is even more exciting to me as the dean of the school of computer and information sciences is that dr nagendra kumar and dr satish sri rama are two of our newest additions to the school and that they have taken the lead on this particular uh, uh, domain of internet of things which is also one of the newer kids on the block when it comes to computer science technologies and uh, it's a nice thing to see two of the newest additions to our school take the lead here and i'm um, sure that it'll inspire a whole lot of us to take up even more exciting things and uh, bring the school to the forefront of uh, various technologies that it works in i also want to say a couple of things on a slightly lighter vein here we have a saying in english which is very negative connotations which says uh, pot calling the kettle black the point is i don't want to look at the negative connotations of that saying but look at the two objects which are involved there one is a pot the other is a kettle and this is precisely where the internet of things is taking us forget the pots and the kettles if we need to believe the advertisements that come on the tvs today you can easily see a fridge calling your autonomous vehicle and directing the autonomous vehicle to a supermarket where it will buy milk and bring it back because the fridge finds that it doesn't have enough milk in it these are the kinds of advertisements we are seeing futuristic advertisements and uh, we always need these kinds of futuristic advertisements to lead us forward when we look at uh, see the area that i work is also one of the um very popular areas today which is deep learning you see ads you see videos you'll see all kinds of things like deep fakes and uh, but absolutely stunning things that we never imagined even a few years ago and i see internet of things taking us on a similar path we should be looking at things which are unimaginable today and they are all possible they are being brought within the technical possibility range today and that's why i'm very excited to see this course and i'm also very excited to see the large number of participants showing that this field has definitely caught the imagination of a lot of people and from imagination to implementation and realization is usually a very short path and uh, these are the things i would like all the participants to focus on and i'll conclude with three things because we are dealing all with these all these things online i'll say three things first patience we need a lot of patience to learn that we know and this online meetings have pushed patience to the next level not only do we need to have patience to understand what is being delivered to us we also need to have patience to withstand the infrastructural things so for example there may be an occasional connectivity problem there may be an occasional drop in quality there may be an occasional other irritation which comes in the way of uh, being focused and excited about the entire 5 day program uh, but that's where patience comes into play so today there is a need for increased patience second i'll say is enthusiasm a lot of enthusiasm comes in meetings from the fact that we can interact with our peers uh the interaction facilities have slightly gone down in this online mode because it's very easy for us to interact with the speakers and speakers to interact with the participants but for participants to interact among themselves the facilities are not so great so i request all the participants to keep these two things in mind and the third thing that's there is focus you need focus 
to succeed in anything and online again brings a lot of distractions which will take the focus away the ringing of a doorbell the entrance of somebody into the room if you are joining this from home maybe discussions between your spouse and the kids discussions between the kids variety of things happen and it's important for us to maintain focus in middle in the middle of all these distractions so what i want to tell you is uh keep these three things in mind patience enthusiasm and focus and then look at the excitement that's there in internet of things and get the best out of this program i'm sure nagendra kumar satish and others have lined up a very interesting set of activities for you events for you talks for you i know that we have been interacting with them both and setting up the lab here that you can probably you will be accessing uh, remotely so all these are very exciting things and i wish you all the very best and getting the best out of this workshop so thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you for uh, enlightening us with the importance of this particular course so uh, uh, just to have a quick information uh, about the number of participants so there are uh, uh, 200 participants have been approved for this program and i i could see around 110 of them are present in this particular session so uh, the, that shows the eagerness and the interest and the passion of course on the participants to gain some knowledge and acquire some skills related to the internet of things so uh, i assure you all the participants uh, we will try our best to make sure that an effective teaching learning process is going to be dwelled upon uh, during this particular five days so if you have seen the schedule uh, we started with the uh, basics parts of the electronics with the sensors then with the communication then with the data processing so the sessions have been spread across uh, uh, different areas and uh, moreover the a uh, significance of this particular workshop uh, rather the fdp is that almost all the speakers are from the university of hyderabad so uh, that shows the strong uh, cohesiveness the strong uh, team that has been uh, available at this particular place to uh, in future uh, you can make some uh, collaborations and we can have certain kind of interactions to make uh, the iot teams of publications in a more robust manner so uh, 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 may I now the propose the vote of thanks so first of all i would like to propose a hearty vote of thanks to our professor aparavaru vice chancellor university of hyderabad for uh, gracing today's inaugural session and uh, giving us a very inspiring uh, inaugural address and and also i like to thank our beloved dean professor chakravarti bhagwati garu uh, for his very valuable guidance and throughout this particular preparation of this workshop he has always at the back of me and uh, supported me uh, morally and as well as the ethically and the other sets of things which have been uh, helpful for me to establish the labs equipments here and uh, uh, i i thank the atal academy uh, for giving us an opportunity to share our knowledge and the skills with the uh, wide uh, participants across this country which are from 21 different states the participants have been now in this particular uh, uh, participating in this particular fdp uh, uh, at the last uh, i like to thank the participants for being with us and it is an honor for us that you thought to be here instead of roaming in the cyber lanes or chatting with your friends or trying to uh, explore more information through google you have been now trying to spend some time uh, i assure you that you will have a worthy of attending this particular fdp program so thank you thank you one and all so uh, the technical session will start in another 5 uh, minutes so there are some more participants will be are in the queue just i'll make sure that they are also been joining now so thank you for uh, attending this inaugural sessions now the session is been inaugural session is now uh, end up thank you one and all thank you once again So the participants please be online uh, i will just uh, like to uh, brief you about the the guidelines the procedures that we are trying to follow uh, of course this may be a reminder for you but uh, just kindly be hold on just in another 2 minutes we'll uh, join with our 
join other set of participants and we'll start our technical session one.
Okay. Uh, good morning to all. Good morning once again. So this is technical session one, introduction to the Internet of Things. Uh, the outline of this session is, uh, let us start with why we need uh, this Internet of Things and uh, what is Internet of Things, followed by how did this particular uh, concepts, the applications have started and the hardware and the software components that are involved in this particular Internet of Things, then followed by certain questions. So before we is, uh, start up this particular technical session, so I thought I will just discuss a few uh, logistics with respect to the uh, FDP program. So uh, around 125 participants are there now. So just let me re remind you uh, to the, all the participants, uh, the day-wise, materials will be shared with you through the Google email ID. So please do regularly check up your uh, Google inboxes for uh, downloading the materials. Of course, the day one material is been sent to you. And uh, as I can track from my side, uh, most of you have already downloaded, but uh, still some of you have sent me some uh, emails regarding unable to download the zip file. So uh, at the end of the session, uh, once again, I will uh, make sure that uh, that particular permissions will be granted for you to download those files. Or once again, I will uh, send the particular zip file to you. So by the end of this today, you will get the day two materials. Of course, the materials will be mostly uh, related to the practice session that we planned it uh, in the afternoons of uh, all these four days. So the purpose of this practice session is that uh, the beginners in IoT, at least they should have some feeling uh, in doing the things uh, with the minimum uh, and the minimum basics. So keeping in view of that particular uh, idea that at least the beginners should start doing certain things. So we prepared certain experiments, of course you can call it as exercises. And in our lab, we already set up certain Raspberry Pis and other Arduino and other electronic stuff for you to get access. Of course, you can remotely log into those machines and 
uh, try to run your programs and the basic things definitely it will be assimilated to you so that you can understand in a better way for a beginner uh, so that is for the afternoon session practice sessions we which we have planned it so every day afternoon from uh, after the third session is over immediately we'll start the practice session so uh, the, regarding the attendance of course uh, the 80% of attendance is mandatory for the participants to Uh, that is one of the criteria to obtain the certificate uh, after the successful completion of this particular program in addition to the attendance uh, at the end of the program on the last day if you had have seen the schedule uh, there is an online test is also been planned so there will be around 30 multiple choice questions uh, of course all those multiple choice questions will be related to the uh, uh, stuff that we have been uh, delivering and as well as you are gaining during this all this uh, five days of the sessions that you have attended so please do be uh, attend those uh, online test as well as the regular attendance is a, is a must so we will be keep tracking whether you have attended the sessions or not of course once you logged in to the sessions uh, uh, your uh, details have been entered through our zoom software we will be keep tracking of those your attendances uh, so i request and i urge all the participants to be regular of course the sessions are uh, linked together in the sense that uh, some of those uh, topics uh, will be definitely will be continued in the next topic so if you are absent for certain topics then the continuity may be lost so may i request uh, make sure that you are trying to attend all the sessions so uh, at least two sessions in a day is a must for the participants uh, at least the attendance to be counted so make sure uh, this uh, to be in kept in mind so of course uh, i also request uh, the participants to give their feedbacks uh, at the end of the sessions there will be a polling uh, sessions will be held uh, most likely in the question answer sessions of that particular uh, topic the polling through polling we try to collect certain feedback from you regarding that particular session so this may can be an in addition to the uh, atal academy which they also may collect the feedback at the end of the program uh, so this will help us to improve further for the next uh, sessions that we are going to plan in the near future so yeah, of course uh, the most and the important thing is please do interact with the speakers uh, the experts are in uh, definitely they are the uh, stalwarts in their particular area and of course they are doing a lot of explorations in that particular uh, sub areas of those internet of things themes so please try to clarify your doubts uh, or most likely you can contact through email or during the session at the end of the session also you can interact with them so if there is no physical contact at least by virtually you please try to uh, get the if there is a burning doubts are there for you immediately you can just clarify with them and try to Uh, uh get yourself uh, ease in understanding the topics as well as getting your doubts clarified so uh, if at all you have any doubts you please do post to me to my email or to the uh, uh sms to my number uh, so my email id and my whatsapp number and as well as the uh, mobile number is available with you so we have already shared with our uh, details to you so please do be in touch Uh, of course the material of day one again i will post it at the end of uh, this particular session so i don't want to interrupt uh, this session and do that particular process now so if at all uh, any doubts are there you can try to interrupt the speaker or at least by me and try to clarify it if there is really a serious uh, thing that needs to be clarified immediately so there is a chat window of course uh, you are always welcome to post your uh, 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 messages and your queries and other stuffs that you like to share with other participants so, so please be an in interactive and please feel free and uh, be happy and try to acquire as much as you can thank you so let us start uh, this technical session 1 so the outline i have prepared like this let us try to understand why we need internet of things so the internet of things Uh, to put uh, to understand or to put in a easy way uh, the simple answer is that we are all lazy in the sense that uh, we are becoming lazy of course uh, 
because of the advancements of technology, we like to have some automations and do other set of things in a very smart way. And uh, so with the help of the science and technology, we are taking the advantage of these advancements in science and technology uh, to make our e life easy without spending much work or without much uh, putting more efforts. So obviously, this Internet of Things is basically a one form or the other is like a, a, a replacement to the automations. Of course, this automation process itself is not a new in this particular uh, era, but the, a smart automation kind of stuff is been very much is in place in today's day-to-day -day life. So, of course, uh, in order to make the things easy for us with the help of the environmental things and as well as with the environmental processes. So this Internet of Things theme is basically generates a lot of stuff. You get a lot of data that is getting generated in making the things automated. And with that lot of data that is getting generated, we try to make some uh, good intelligent inferences and a better way of think making the things for our day-to-day -day life. And of course, in this process, uh, you like to control the stuff which is in our ambient nature. And you like to make the things work very fast. So in this process, it is all about making ourselves lazy. So this is in one way, uh, trying to understand that. But the other way is that at least we are making our day-to-day -day life in a much uh, better living styles. So maybe either in the transportations or in the healthcare or in the agriculture or in the avionics or in other set of industrial domains, we are taking the advantage of this improvements in the technology and with the help of the internet of things, we make the things very wiser and as well as make the best of it for our day-to-day -day life. So what is this internet of things? Basically, it is uh, everyday things that we are using are getting connected with each other uh, for making the a smarter tomorrow. So if you look on to the uh, different verticals and different horizontals in our day-to-day -day life with respect to different applications, uh, definitely this Internet of Things concepts, the philosophy, the mechanizations, the automation process, definitely the Internet of Things ideology is going to be exhibited across the different domains. So in our everyday things, whatever we use, we try to interconnect them with the help of the internet and we make, make use of them in a best way so that our day-to-day -day life activities is going to be much smoother and much happier and much healthier living styles. So this internet of things is the uh, interconnection of the everyday objects that we are trying to use it for our different purposes. The basic ingredients or the basic components of this Internet of Things consist of three uh, important subdomains, basically related to instrumentation. In other words, the sensing objects, which are being interconnected through a communication media, basically through wireless. And of course, the data that has been gathered from this sensing objects, we try to process the data and we try to make some smarter decisions. So these are the three important areas, the sensing objects, the instrumentation of the sensing objects, the communication of those sensing objects which have been interconnected with each other and the data processing at the higher level. So these particular three areas, if you can further narrow down to a certain level, uh, the instrumentation subdomain do consist of the entities such as sensors and actuators. Sensors, actuators, and other electronic stuff, obviously, which make use of them to interact with this outside world or to the environment. And those sensors, actuators, and electronic stuff, when they collect the information from the environment, they do have certain kind of processing, which we call them they do the local processing with each other. And once the local processing is being completed, is being stored, the data is being stored, and the data can be further 
propagated to other set of entities or other set of things that have been interconnected with each other with the help of the networks and the internet. And of course, we take the clouds for processing a huge quantity of data, uh, which has been spread across the different areas where the data has been collected from different sources. So these are the different uh, areas where or the different things, the internet of things is going to be very much focused upon. So if you look to the architecture, the scientific world coming to the Cisco, Oracle, IEEE, the Intel, and so on and so forth, they have proposed different architectures. Of course, as such a standard has not come into existence. Each one has given their own set of architectures. But more or less, the conceptually, they have been overlapped into the most of those particular things that you can see it. So basically, the architecture has been in a layered architecture where the abstractions of the and the functionalities of the each layer are being put together. So Cisco has defined his uh, the IoT architecture as at the lower level, we have a physical devices and the controllers which are being uh, interconnected with the help of sensors, the machines, the devices, the intelligent edge nodes of different types. And those devices are being provided with the different connectivity in the layer two with a different set of communication processing units. And above that, we have a certain layer called as edge or a fog computing, where certain kind of analysis can be done or can be inferred very near to the data origin. And of course, the data has been either it can be stored or it can be propagated to the different set of other places and so on and so forth. The different applications will try to make use of those data that has been collected and have certain collaborations and processes. So this is what the Cisco has defined as a, a seven layer abstraction model for the IoT architecture. So when you come to the Oracle, basically the Oracle uh, looks on to the software and more specifically onto the databases which are pertaining to the data that has been getting originated from these IoT devices. So their perspective is that at the lower level, the different set of devices have been interconnected with an intelligent gateway, and they have been communicated to various other device management processes, the device connectivity operations, and the different set of services can be easily realized by the set of operations which have been performing together at different layers. And above all, you have the set of applications that are dwelling upon in collecting the data that is getting originated from these devices. If you look to the IEEE P2413 standard, the IEEE has defined the IoT architecture as, at the lower level, you have abstraction of things. It can be anything or a physical entity that is existing in the environment. And of course, at the top of those particular physical entities, they do provide certain kind of uh, uh, processing information such as who am I, who makes me, what can I do and all set of functionalities are defined for the set of devices and other set of applications and the services are also been governing those particular devices and the applications are being scattered for those particular set, different IoT themes. So similarly, the Intel is basically focused on the uh, edge level in the sense that at the entities of physical things. So like this, each one has given its own set of uh, uh, diagrammatically, but uh, nevertheless, if you look to the philosophy behind these particular architectures as proposed by different scientific domains, the, there is a lot of overlapping as well as the conceptually, they are being one and the same. So the IoT architecture can be viewed as a set of layers and each layer starting from the lower layer connecting to the physical entities and to the top layer, various applications are being dwelled upon in solving certain health related tasks or it can be transport related tasks or it can be different set of IoT application domains. Of course, you can refer to the uh, further information on the paper, which has been uh, referred from this particular case. So please do remember, uh, IoT always requires a measurement a measurement which comes from the sensor devices, sensors or actuators or other electronic set of components. So Lord Kelvin has given that sensing 
is basically if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. So basically the IoT philosophy is all behind this particular sensing philosophy. So the sensing is a process which tries to measure that you are going to interact with the outside world or to your ambient nature. So the sensing has been done with the help of sensors. So what does the sensors do? If you look to the basic philosophy or the basic purpose of a sensor is to measure the values. The measuring the values with respect to the outside world or the things that have been getting connected with each other. So the sensors tries to interact in the sense that it sense the phenomenon which has been getting connected with the outside world collect the raw data once it sends that particular outside world. And of course, either it can be processed at that particular point of time when it is collected or it can be communicated further to have a better inferences. The most important thing here is the sensors do work with low powers. So a little quantity of energy is sufficient for them to work. So they do not require high voltages of energy and high power things. So the most important thing here is sensors do work with power constraints. And that is sufficient to work for a longer period of time if you provide sufficient energy components which have been connected to the sensors. So once the sensors have collected the data, the data has been either processed locally with the help of other electronic components such as Raspberry Pi, or Intel Edison's or Galileo or Udo Neo systems and so on and so forth. So basically these set of computational devices do process the data that has been collected from the sensors and do store certain data locally to have a better inferences for the near future purposes. So the processing of the collected data from the sensors from the ambient systems are being processed locally by this set of devices. Of course, there is a new terms that have been now originated in the last decade. One is called as an edge computing, the other one is called as fog computing. Now the edge computing is the word which has been coined by the Intel Corporation and the fog computing is the word which has been given by the Cisco. Now that there is a difference between the edge and the fog computing. So basically the edge computing process involves processing the data very near to the data origin. It means very near to the sensor itself. So the processing as well as making decisions do happen almost at the sensor level or at the network edge level of those sensors which are connected in a network. Whereas the fog computing, basically, the purpose of the fog computing has come in such a way that if you are collecting the data from a, a particular motion sensor, motion sensor is basically a sensor which tries to detect if there is a motion in a, at a particular place. It means if there is a movement of a person at a particular place. So a sensor is there which tries to detect the movements of a person at a particular location. Suppose if this motion sensor keeps on collecting the data and sends the data to some other place such as a cloud through the internet. And if there is no motion or if there is no movements of a person at that particular location at all, and the sensor keeps on sends the data to the cloud, which is empty values, then there is no purpose of having the motion sensor and setting up the systems in a proper way in the sense that the purpose of the motion sensor to detect the motion, only when there is a motion, the purpose is completely lost. In other terms, you are sending the data unnecessarily to the cloud all the time when there is no motion at all in that particular location. So the last decade, people have realized that sending data to the cloud and processing the data at the cloud and getting the inferences from the cloud for certain set of applications, for certain set of activities is of no use. So to avoid the latencies, the delay in getting the responses 
and sending the unnecessary data to the clouds and do processing at the cloud to avoid all such kind of things, the Cisco has proposed a computing phenomenon or a computing philosophy called as a fog computing, where most of the data processing, once the data has been collected from the sensor is processed at almost near to the network edge rather than at the cloud. So for certain applications, data need not be sent directly or indirectly to the cloud all the time. So for certain applications only we require that and for other certain applications where real time processing of data is to take place, we need not send the data to the cloud all the time. So the real time processing can be realized with the help of this edge and the fog computing. So that's the importance of this edge and fog computing. Of course, during the course of our study, uh, during the faculty uh, remaining sessions, more information related to the edge and the fog computing will be revealed. So just keep a hold on this one. I just give an introduction at this particular point. So we'll continue this with the more practical things in the later stage of our course of our study. Now coming to the gateways, if you might have seen in the architecture, there are certain gateways which are like an intermediary processing units for processing as well as a communication purposes, which tries to interact with the sensors as well as with the other sets of electronic stuffs for processing as well as for making certain inferences. So if you look to the gateway protocols, the standard protocols which have been defined by the scientific community is basically the gateway protocol such as six low pan, six low power personal area networks or long range wide area networks and Bluetooth low energy communication protocols are widely used for different set of gateway protocols for different purposes. If you look specifically for internet of things, so we have a constrained application protocol such as co-app, or you can have a MQ transport telemetry. Some people do call it as message queue. Of course, message queue is the not right the word, not right word. So we'll see it in the later sessions what exactly its purpose is. Then we also have hypertext transport protocol. Of course, it is a heavyweight protocol as compared to MQTT and COAP. And we have an extended markup personal packet transfers and as well as which is basically relies on the extended markup languages. So these are the XMPP, HTTP are very heavy weights, of course, which have been more or less not been considered as an internet of things protocols. The most common protocols are you are having the MQTT and the COAP protocols. So more elaborately, we'll try to see it in the afternoon session about this particular set of protocols. So of course, the next layer after the gateway sessions is on, we have something called as cloud processing and storage. So whatever the data that has been collected from the sensors, which have been passed on to the communication systems through our gateways. In the earlier days, of course, in the last decades, people do process those sensor data at the cloud. So that the aggregation of data takes place and proper realization of the data and the inferences can be easily obtained from that particular collected data. And of course, it also is going to be helpful for storing the data for a long-term purposes and to have more inferences or more smarter decisions can be obtained from that long-term data that has been stored at that particular cloud, which can have a huge infrastructure for uh, a better storage purposes. But of course, it has its own drawbacks and limitations for certain applications, such as the real-time processing of data is required. Obviously, cloud computings are having its own limitations, as well as for healthcare applications, as well as for the security and the privacy of the different set of activities, different set of applications, where it has its own set of questions. And these things have to be very much concerned for different purposes. So cloud processing and storage, nevertheless, it do provide certain advantages for certain applications, but it has its own set of limitations for different set of applications that you will see in the uh, course of our study. You have a cloud computing session is also there along with the other sets of topics. So you'll try to 
uh, familiarized with the what are the limitations what the advantages and so on and so forth how the internet of things have started so you might have seen open source softwares you might have heard about open source software but this open source hardware of course in the last uh, two decades and so on and so forth so it's almost at the 2000 year of course strictly speaking 1998 itself so this open source hardware philosophy has come into picture in the scientific world so where the important component the important entity or the important electronic gadget the important electronic device which we might have practiced in our school days or in our college days the microcontroller so the internet of things philosophy has basically originated from the usage of this microcontroller so once the microcontroller has become an open source hardware device where this microcontroller is basically a small programmable device which has a small memory memory in the sense to store certain values and a small memory to process the instructions and it can be easily connectable to various other entities or to various other physical devices along with the sensors and other components so with the advent of this open source hardware the microcontroller has been very much in the market and people have tried to fabricate it and make certain instrumentation to this particular intel's a250 a251 the microcontroller so they try to customize this microcontroller for various other purposes and slowly the internet of things era has begun once the microcontroller is now has come into existence so in continuation to the microcontroller this open source hardware is another important gadget another important component is basically an arduino you can see the figure here basically so this arduino is basically it consists of a microcontroller yes it is a small programmable device it is easily connectable it is an open source people can take that particular circuit diagram and prepare or fabricate and instrument their own set of microcontrollers for various purposes and it has a simple to use software where uh, people can easily write once they know the c programming so if you can people can write a c programming and you can write a c program so that you can interact with your hardware devices very easily so the firmware basically the software that is going to be embedded on this hardware is called as basically the firmware so the firmware can be easily written and it can be easily deployable on this set of hardware device called arduino so of course the arduino has its own advantages and it has its own limitations too so let us see one by one and we we'll next next look into this another arduino gadget is basically an ethernet which can support other communication purposes with other con connecting devices can be easily integrated here so where a network connections are more in number here so you can have an expansion to that you can have an expansion board which is connected to the arduino the base board so we call it as basically an arduino ethernet so it provides more number of connections more number of components more number of physical entities can be easily connected and can be easily operated so there is another gadget called as a raspberry pi so this raspberry pi is basically a mini computer so a mini computer in the sense that a mini computer is basically it has its own a processor it has its own a ram it has its own operating system the software which tries to manage and control the other hardware components which have been connected to that particular board so that's why it is basically a mini computer so this is basically this raspberry pi is software oriented programming so this components which are been present here and which can be interacted with the outside world can be easily controllable through your software and of course the networking uh, systems either you can connect to the other wireless communication standards or wireless communication protocols and it can be easily networked with the other set of systems so this is basically a computer whereas 
the Arduino board is basically a hardware device. Of course, it has got a programming capability, but very limited in terms of only kilobytes. So whereas Raspberry Pi, it will be in terms of megabytes. And of course, the latest Raspberry Pi it will be in terms of gigabytes of processing as well as storing is capable enough. So the difference between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. So please let me make a, a, a clarity and give you a more important information at this stage. So Arduino boards are basically used for uh, real-time applications in the sense that the Arduino board is directly interacting and directly interconnecting with the outside world. So whatever the program you write it, which has been a firmware, which has been embedded onto this Arduino is the only program that has been written on that Arduino. Whereas Raspberry Pi, basically Raspberry Pi has its own set of operating systems. So whatever the program you write it, and the program is being embedded onto this Raspberry Pi is always in control with the operating system. So here, the Raspberry Pi is not going to be very much flexible and very much capable enough to interact with your outside world very easily, as easy as Arduino. So in the sense that whenever you want to interact with the outside world very fastly, very rapidly, very accurately, very robustly, then Arduino boards are most preferable things. Whereas Raspberry Pis, obviously they have the capabilities in terms of processing, in terms of communication, in terms of storage and all, they are very much capable enough as compared to Arduino, but it has its own limitations as they cannot be easily, as easy as Arduino boards connect to the physical entities in a real time. That's why people do prefer, and one more difference you can see that the Arduino has got a microcontroller, whereas the Raspberry Pi has not having any microcontroller. So in terms, in other terms, to quickly say, there is no analog to digital conversions that are happening on the Raspberry Pi. Whereas the analog to digital conversions can be easily performed on the Arduino board where it has its own microcontroller. So whenever you want to realize or whenever you want to connect a physical entity, obviously the physical entity you are interacting, you get an analog signal. And of course that analog signal has to be represented in a digital form when you are going to process the digital information on another entity or in another electronic gadget for you to make use of things in a better way. So we always our computers or all other electronic stuffs do process the data very easily and very efficiently in a digital form. That's what you all these are digital gadgets. So basically the Arduino board is much capable enough to convert your analog data to your digital data more accurately in a real time and more easily. So people do connect your sensors, of course, to your Arduino boards which has which support of microcontroller. So of course, you'll see in the later part of our course of our study, you'll see other experiments and the advantages and limitations and so on and so forth. So whatever the stuff I'm trying to uh, make you to understand here is basically these are the important things that are required as part of the inter internet of things. So everyone should be uh, having certain clarity in what are these components or what are these gadgets are used for even if you're not an electronics guy or not an instrumentation guy, at least you should be make sure that please understand the purposes, the differences, what these particular things are capable enough and what they are not capable enough. So if you look to the various hardware components that are available for our various internet of things, we have starting with the, as I mentioned, the Arduino board, which has got the basic microcontroller and followed by the Raspberry Pi. Of course, this Raspberry Pi has got its own advantages and its disadvantages for certain applications. Then followed by Intel Galileo, Intel Edison's, BeagleBone Blacks, Udo Neos, Parallela. Of course, these are all the gadgets that are available on the market for you to realize and for you to deploy your own Internet of Things applications for various purposes and for a variety of reasons. 
Of course, each one has its own advantages and disadvantages when you compare. So in our course of study, mostly we'll be focusing on this Arduino as well as with the Raspberry Pi and to some extent the Intel Galileo. So the basic differences, what you can understand at this point of time between these things are the way those boards, the way the boards and the way the components are being made use of. So Arduino, as I mentioned, it is basically uh, directly connecting to the hardware. It has its own microcontroller, whereas Raspberry Pi has a general purpose input output pins, which is flexible enough to connect with other electronic components. Intel Galileo and Intel Edison's obviously has its own uh, processor, which is capable enough to interact with various components and do certain processings in a multiplex manner. Of course, the microcontrollers are also not present in the Intel Edison one. You need to be very careful when you're buying those kind of things. And the Beagle Bones, Black and Udo, of course, these are on the other sides of the world. So, of course, in India also, we have, we can try to procure from the commercial market. Uh, these Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Intel Galileo, Intel Edison, and Beagle Bones are, are widely available on our Amazon websites too. So what are the things that are good for our sensors and so on and so forth? So as I mentioned, Arduino is the most apt one to start with anything that needs to be done because the microcontroller is there. So the Arduino with Atmega 328 versions is the most appropriate thing. You also have the Texas MSP430, Texas Instruments. They do have their microcontroller MSP430 version, which is also very much capable enough to process the analog to digital conversions. And of course, you, you should need a CC. Uh, Compiler, of course, the little bit of, uh, uh, in the early days, there is certain uh, complexities and certain uh, issues will be there in order to load the compilers and do other set of things, you know, uh, functionalities are to be very much complex. But nowadays, they are very much easy plug and play kind of stuff have been made use of. So you also have a chip kits, which is a programmable interface controller, which can have certain capabilities to connect with the other entities. So we have certain other sensors, uh, other gadgets, which are also meant good for sensors as well as do processing locally. So because the processing processor, ARM processor is available here. So you have the processing capabilities, which are very much useful for you to process the data locally. So the Raspberry Pi, you can see Raspberry Pi 900 megahertz ARM processor. Of course, this is Raspberry Pi 3. So you have a Raspberry Pi 4, the latest model, 4B, which, which can run up to 1.2 gigahertz processor. And of course, the 4 GB RAM or 8 GB RAM Raspberry Pis are also available in the commercial market. So Intel Galileo has got a processor, Quark x86 processor, the Intel processor x86. Uh, uh, so it works with a 400 megahertz, the clock rate. And of course, the RAM is very much less, 256 MB of RAM. So the Intel Edison's chip, if you see on the right side, of course, it supports the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as the other set of capabilities. So these are the other functionalities for the other set of uh, electronic gadgets, the BeagleBone Blacks, uh, Udo Neos, and the Palela. Of course, they are not that much widely used. They are very much uh, uh, constraint oriented to the applications where we try to use in our day-to-day -day life. So the most commercially available and the most apt is what we see here, the uh, Raspberry Pis, uh, Jetsons, Nanos, and so on and so forth. So as far as the software is concerned, the software, uh, we look into the various types of prototypings and the professional programmings, what are available and how do you store the data and how do you do the analysis and what are the various solutions providers which have been helpful for in realizing the IoT themes in a much easier way. So if you see the software, uh, the Arduino software, Arduino IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So you can easily uh, downloadable open source software. So for your Arduino boards, you can use this software to write your own code and embed the code onto your electronic device. So the Arduino IDE is going to be very much widely used. So if you see the right side, you have a wild gradient view. 
this wild regions today is basically an integrated development environment where it provides a common platform for you for various programming languages as well as uh, uh, it has got a provision to have simulators and emulators and as well as to connect the devices remotely. So we, for the practice session, we'll be using this well reading studio. So you will come to know what is this well reading studio, how it is helpful for various purposes and so on and so forth. So in the afternoon session, I'll try to discuss more a little bit elaborately on the uh, usability as well as the applicable applications and as well as how best this studio can be useful for our uh, practice work in the coming days. You also have an Eclipse IDE, of course, for uh, uh, other uh, electronic gadgets, which are going to be helpful for you to integrate as well as to embed your own set of course. It has its own set of application programming interfaces. So various libraries can be easily integrated here. So you can use this particular software uh, to make use to embed your software code onto those electronic devices very easily. So we have a Vim editors and as well as embed online editor is also there, which can you can make use of if you don't want to install your software on your laptops or onto your electronic devices. And Intel, uh, Galileo and Intel editions, they have their own set of softwares. Of course, they are not commercial and they are not open source. So here we need to purchase them and make use of them for our programming purposes. If you look to the data acquisitions and analysis, uh, you have a, a Zivli, the cloud platform, and of course the Microsoft Azure uh, cloud infrastructure is available to you with limited capabilities of limited storage purposes and limited uh, uh, features available for us so that you can send your data to this particular cloud and you can do certain practice here. But uh, uh, in this FDP, we are not uh, uh, looking onto this Microsoft Azure or Zivli. So we have an open source as well as the cloud infrastructure that is a well reading studio. So which will help us to do, uh, write some programs, do certain processing, do some analysis and, so, and try to understand the things in a better way. It's almost 11.15 now. So I'll open the session for the question answers. So please put forward your questions. Of course, this is just an introduction to Internet of Things, where I try to highlight you what are all the gadgets, what are the components, and what is Internet of Things, and what are these are the minimum stuff that is what I expect you to try to understand and acquire uh, to go on further for that particular next set of sessions. So I open the session for the question answer sessions. Yes, you can again you can put it on the chat window or you can. Maybe if you raise the hand, uh, the uh, if you raise the hand, then obviously you will be unmuted to ask the question, or you can just post the question. Yes, Dharavat. Uh, Srinivasa, can you please unmute Dharavat? Yes, sir. Doing, sir. Doing. So, Dharavat, sir, please unmute yourself. Hello. Sir, is it hearing? Yes, yes sir. You are audible. Please go ahead. Yes, yes. Sir. So, actually, where we are going to exactly using these real-time applications and what is the investment cost towards these uh, Internet of Things for uh, sensing the anything that means either signaling systems or any vehicle tracking system or any health-oriented scenarios. So, what is the investment cost towards these applications and where we are going to apply these uh, remote sensing uh, Internet of Things uh, devices? Sir, if, if I understood your question correctly, where are you going to use our Internet of Things? That's what your yes. question is? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, if you might have seen this slide, uh, the applications of Internet of Things are uh, very wide here, of course. Sir. Sir. Just let me just put the slide on. Right. See, uh, now here, if you're looking for the transportation, yes. okay. So in the transportation, if you are trying to monitor the traffic on the roads, basically. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you want to uh, see the uh, intensity or the dense of the traffic, and you need to control the traffic at the traffic lights, you can deploy a camera yes, uh, with, the Raspberry, with the Raspberry Pi, and you can start monitoring it, count the number of uh, a particular junction, count the number of vehicles, in a very accurate manner. So that is what but, we require uh, in the real but time. But sir, previously you told that Raspberry is not supported the microcontroller, no sir? Yes, it's basically, yes. So the combination of Arduino and Raspberry Pi is, is very much needed. Or the combination of microcontroller with the Raspberry Pi is, is very much needed. See, it is not just only with one Raspberry Pi you can uh, uh, realize and you can uh, get the benefits of the things in a very wiser way. See, we, the thing here is when you want to have certain kind of a smartness or a wiser things needs to be inferred, we need certain capability of processing. So processing the data capabilities are very much needed. So that is the purpose. That is the need for having certain processing units in terms of a, a little bit of processing speeds as well as with the little storages. To, the, to that extent, we take care of the Raspberry Pis. So along the Raspberry Pi, we put a vision sensor. Vision sensor means Raspberry Pi cameras, basically. You can have an understanding like that. So along with the vision sensors and with other set of things, which are being connected to your microcontroller. So of course, you need to design and develop uh, the instrumentation part of that particular unit. So once you... Yes, sir. So what is the approximate cost for sensing these uh, establishment for the... Uh, tracking of the signals or anything else? See, it is not a tracking of the signals. It is tracking of the our uh, people who are moving on the road, the vehicles yes. and the people. Yeah. Okay. See, it, it, it all depends. Uh, on if you are looking for an, a research point of view and you want to explore and you, if you want to design and develop, that is one thing. And if you want to, once you design, develop and you tested the product in a better way, then if you commercialize the product, when you go to the industry perspective, that is an another aspect here. So when you're okay. looking for this, uh, yeah, uh, this uh, uh, any new product which comes to the commercialization or to the industry product, usually that particular uh, uh, philosophy, the idea is going to be uh, is going to be designed, developed, and tested and validated. So usually we as an academicians at our research laboratories, we do all this kind of stuff. So once we are been uh, accurate enough, once we see that the feasibility of the usage of that product, whatever we designed, developed, tested, and validated, the things are working properly, then obviously we go further to the industry. And obviously industry is going to take come forward or whatever it may be collaborated, whatever it may be. So there, that particular model is going to be a different aspect. So, it, so it all depends. Yeah, it all depends. So the exact cost Nobody is going to say or nobody is going to predict it. You cannot say. But for our design and development purpose, for learning purpose, the cost is going to all depends on what components are you been designing or what components do you need to design that uh, circuit and implement it and so on and so forth. So that is as far as the uh, transportation is concerned. If you look for the smart homes and uh, smart cities. So if you're looking for a smart home, and if you want to do certain, uh, deploy certain smart objects, if you are going to monitor the inhabitants of that particular home, or if you are going to monitor the patients in a home, or if you are going to monitor the elderly people who are living in their home, and if you are going to monitor their well being conditions and so on and so forth, then obviously your Internet of Things applications are going to be very much required here. So if you look for the telemedicine or if you are in healthcare, Obviously, if you might have seen in the COVID-19 situation too, where your ambulances, your hospital, your homes, of course, people need to follow the social distancing. 
So internet of medical things, basically they call it as internet of medical things in the way where the entities like your ambulance, your hospitals, your nurses, all others are been connected through your online mode and they are being interacted with each other. And obviously that application itself is nothing but internet of medical things. So not only this, if you are going to monitor your other animals or birds or your vehicles, or if you're looking for agriculture regarding your, uh, your yielding of your crops, your for harvesting, monitoring the environmental conditions, or if you're looking for the smart grids, energy consumptions, uh, so smart grids, how best you can make use of your energy more efficiently. And of course, if you're looking for your security and surveillance purposes, so if you look here, is a wide variety of applications where internet of things are going to be widely used. So it is not that uh, uh, it's only for a specific particular field. So almost in our day-to-day -day life, whatever the activities that we do, whatever the things that we are trying to make use of, you can make use of a smart classroom, a smart classroom or a smart building, so on and so forth. So all this definitely will lead to a smart cities. Of course, the technologies has been very much advanced. The hardware costs have been come down. And obviously, uh, your smart decisions can be made very easily and very uh, efficiently now. So with the help of your artificial intelligence, uh, the methods and the philosophies, if you can deploy on the usages and the deployments on those internet of things, then definitely all these stuff can be easily realized for our betterment of our day-to-day -day activities. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Sir, there are a couple of questions posted in the chat box. Oh, one second, sir. Just open, let me open the chat box once. Sure, sir. May I read out, sir, or? Sir, please also share video recording on every session. Yes, definitely. At the end of all the sessions are being recorded and we are going to share these videos uh, with the Atal Academy and the ACT. Definitely everybody will be able to access this. So I'm just going through the chat window. Uh, try to excuse me. I have not seen this. Uh, Sir, uh, chat session like new to... I'm going one by one. Just kindly hold on. Sure. Yeah. Please share recording of talk day by day to revise it. Yes, definitely. This will be given. The materials as well as the sessions will be recorded. So that zip file is asking for request to access. Uh, uh, just hold on for five Sir. minutes. I will Sir. try to get back this. Why Internet of Things instead of Internet of Devices? Things is a technical word or not? Of course, uh, 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 Prakash, Meena, uh, uh, this answer to this query is why Internet of Things? See, things is basically related to our uh, everyday objects usage, the entities that we are using. So basically, uh, in the beginning of the session, Professor uh, Chakravarti Bhagwati Gaurya has given the kettle and uh, of course, uh, of the Internet of Things idea itself has come from the automation of uh, uh, handling the uh, handling the devices or the handling the things in a better way. Of course, various names, various forms like Internet of Animals, Internet of uh, Human Beings, Internet of Humans, Internet of uh, Medical Things, like this one and so forth have already, uh, the, there are various uh, derivations of that. So things is a technical word or not is basically, it is a generic word. Of course, I do accept, but the white act, Huh? Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Sorry. So, so yeah, sir has, I think, already answered here. Yeah. Sir, things is very yes, yes, exactly. Things is very Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm just going one by one. Uh, kindly share people's of all the sessions after the concerned presentations. Yes, so we try to make sure that people's are already there in the day one folder. Yes, for today's already PPTs have been shared. Of course, some small modifications may be there. Uh, anyway, I will just post it once again at the end of the day. Session 3 PPT is not there. I'll uh, request the speaker to share the PPT once the session is completed. 
Yeah, nice start, sir. Okay, thank you. All uh, the best. Please raise hand or post your questions here. Yes. Sir, is there any applications of IoT in VR and augmented reality? Yes, definitely. People are now very much onto this and one of our students is also doing on the virtual reality and augmented reality application, image processing. So basically for the classroom purpose, we are doing a small work on this one. So obviously at the end of the uh, FDP program, I'll try to share it if their output is there. So yes, VR and AR is now is integrated with the IoTs as yes, people are working on this place. Wild Reading Studio works for both Arduino and Raspberry Pi, sir. Yes, Wild Reading Studio basically works for certain devices like Raspberry Pi. Basically, uh, I will show you in the Arduino session, we are integrating the Arduino with the Raspberry Pi and we are trying to collect the data from the Arduino session, Arduino board too. So there's in the practice session, we have uh, these interconnections. I will get back to you, Navin Agaru. Sir, can we do data analysis on large data with wild reading or it is capability is limited to only small data. See the wild reading studio, the purpose of uh, selecting this wild reading studio for this workshop, for this FDP is uh, to, uh, for a beginner, please keep in mind once again, I repeat, for a beginner, those uh, a novice person who is just uh, started a career or just started writing the programs and all. So basically wild reading studio is basically a cloud platform to interconnect or to integrate or to uh, connect the systems remotely and try to uh, familiarize and assimilate the workspace. So of course, while reading Studio is in the day-to-day, -day, they are doing the advancements. So obviously, yes, they, are, they already, if you see their case studies, they also deployed their systems on the smart cities. You please browse the website of wildreading.com and the wild reading stu dot studio, you'll see the applications where that wild reading studio is very much widely used. So IoT in agriculture is an application where government agencies can take decisions. Yes, IoT in uh, agricultural application is uh, widely used. And of course, uh, many people are getting the benefits of this. Uh, can you use wild reading? Yes, of course, you can use the wild reading studio for your data analysis in the real time too. It can give the uh, predictions. You can do the, the purpose of doing the data analysis is to do the predictions. So that predictions always will help you to make sure that your things are been not lost or you're not going in vain in the later stages. So the data analysis is basically meant for to do the predictions only. So definitely it is useful as predictions based on your uh, statistical modeling or your machine learning model. You can do that one. Cloud storage, yes, the cloud storage is uh, having limitations on this one. Can uh, The next question is, can Raspberry Pi be used as a server? Yes, of course, Raspberry Pi can be used as a web server, as well as for your services can be easily obtained. You can also deploy your own systems, uh, your web server applications on that. You can use your LAMP, uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. We do run on this Raspberry Pi too. Yes. Sir, can you consider Fitbit as a small example of IoT? Yes, of course. IoT, see, basically IoT, uh, you can say this, this is a scientific name or your technical name is a jargon. Basically IoT in other form is basically an automation, a smart automation, you can say. Uh, the smart automation is, the other perspective is basically the uh, IoT itself. Reba, Reba Garu, can you explain the difference between Arduino and Arduino Ethernet? Yeah, the Arduino is basically, it has got a basic microcontroller and it has got the analog and digital pins can be made used to connect various sensors, the basic Arduino. Whereas the Arduino Ethernet, it can support multiple connections. So the Arduino Ethernet is an expansion. Expansion means you add on, add on to your existing Arduino board so that more connections, more set of devices can be easily connected. So Arduino Ethernet can support four, four more boards as like an Arduino. So that is a network connections. We can be easily realized onto the Arduino Ethernet. So I am an artist or a designer. Uh, Karan Gurangaru, I am an artist or a designer. I do not get your question. Yes, of course, IoT themes can also be used on the uh, for an artist as well as for a designer with respect to your AR and VR. So virtual reality and augmented reality applications nowadays, uh, very much uh, uh, the artistic scenarios are very much required. So definitely there is a lot of scope in the coming days uh, for your uh, profession, please. I am not able to join the Google group. Uh, Dr. S. Radha Krishnagaru, 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, actually, the uh, I am not able to join the Google group. The reason is some participants could not able to access the uh, resources. Uh, they are not part of the Google group, sir. They might have changed the uh, Gmails, which were given okay. initially. So okay. So one so thing I can I am adding request, the yeah, please. Sir. Yeah, one thing I can request now. Those uh, if you are if you are registered email IDs are different place. Uh, and if you like to have some other email IDs or your uh, WhatsApp numbers, if you want to some have some other things, then please do email us either myself sir. or uh, Srinivas or Raju. So we will take care of by today afternoon. So sir, I am adding the work. new request, sir. Actually, I'm changing the Gmails and adding. Uh, I am changing the emails and uh, email IDs, and I am adding them to the group, sir. Yeah, please do that, sir. Thank you. Yes. Today morning only registered, so add to this number Google group, ma'am. Okay, he is taking sure. care of it. Sure. A nice presentation, sir. Yeah, thank you. Very good presentation. How to use IoT with image processing. Uh, Dr. Guru Rajgaru, the second day is dedicated for this place. Even I'm very much excited to share my knowledge. My students are here in front of me. They also done this. So the image processing is what we like to showcase our work. So kindly hold on for till tomorrow afternoon where you are going to run TensorFlow light, open CV and the image processing, how it can be done on the Raspberry Pi. And also you can remotely access the Raspberry Pi too, the, uh, using TensorFlow light. We have done certain things and we like to show that particular outputs to you and we'll explain to you how to do that also. So computer vision techniques, how it can be realized on the Raspberry Pi is one of the objective of this particular FDP itself. So Guru Raj Garu, please can hold on till tomorrow afternoon. There is already, we planned it. If you see it in the fog computing and the practice session, uh, I have shown already, I will uh, share the practice sessions day one, day two, day three to you all. So please look into the exercises and the demos and the projects which you like to showcase. So I'm an artist uh, uh, slash designer with no background in computer science. Is programming knowledge important for designing IoT applications and devices? Uh, see, IoT, uh, I like to not only for artist or designer, for anybody who is interested in this IoT, uh, my advice and my suggestions is in this way, please. If you are really uh, developing a system, a system, when I say a system, the system, which is basically an IoT, so the IoT system requires knowledge and skills of, of the instrumentation, communication, and data processing. These three are required. Then the system will definitely will be very much fruitful. And I just uh, will definitely assure you, your product will be definitely uh, very robust, very accurate and this. If you are focusing only on certain aspects of IOTs, means only on data processing or only on application oriented or only on communication oriented or only on the instrumentation or uh, designing and developing a system. If you are only focusing on one to only a particular extent, then yes, there can be a novelty. You may propose a new thing or you may try to give that particular uh, functionality in a better way. But nevertheless, as a system, as a product, it will be like a prototype only, but as a product, it may not be very much fruitful. So uh, anybody, uh, definitely the knowledge and the skills if not a very excellent knowledge, at least the basic knowledge in integrating the all the components of the IoT system itself is very much required. De definitely, the product will be very much useful for the for the society as well as for the scientific world. So yes, uh, I, and again, I, yes, the next question. Thank you. This is uh, nine to mobile numbers, sir. Add in this group. Yes, the, whatever you post on the chat, definitely will take care of. Please, uh, if you uh, if you have missed it, please kindly remind in the next session. To definitely will take care of. It's not that we are going to avoid it. Only thing is, little bit uh, uh, multiple tasks are going on here. That's the only thing. Can we use IoT in computer vision or in surveillance? Yes, exactly. Mohammad Irfan is basically the computer vision. Basically, you do image processing and video processing and analysis. So tomorrow afternoon session is dedicated for this uh, computer vision. How we can realize it on the resource constraint computing device like Raspberry Pi. So that is what our session is planned for. Our Raspberry Pi itself is an IoT gateway. So how you can do your image processing very efficiently is like, we like to share with you that information and the demos. And you can also practice it. So kindly hold on for till tomorrow afternoon. So one by one session will take it. Yes, good rest. Thank you, sir. Nice expression, right? Fine, fine, good. Good session, sir. Question answers part uh, really given opportunity to explore more knowledge. Thank you, sir.
yes every session is having question answer sessions please do interact so 10 10 minutes 10 to 15 minutes of question answer session is very much is been i requested the speakers also so please make use of that session very wisely uh, because it's just it should not be a one way presentation the more interactions we require and no most things okay thank you i think i have come end of this uh, session so i'll wind up the session and we'll meet at 12 o'clock and of sir. course i'll start with the boring session the 12 o'clock session will be a boring but nevertheless sir. it gives you the electronics fundamentals for your iot stuffs so yeah somebody is saying sir. something sorry sir uh, sorry sir uh, before we move on to the next session uh, we will ask request the participants to take the feedbacks uh, or to give yeah, yeah, the feedback please, yeah please uh, yeah, the polling session will be there for just for 2 minutes uh, you'll get the feedback shall i start sir yes yes please go ahead go ahead So participants are requested to uh, uh, give their feedback on the session. so 50% of the participants have responded so far uh, remaining participants are requested to give their feedback so so far 70% of the votes have been uh, feedback have been uh, given request the participants those who have not given the feedback uh, to give their feedback valuable feedback thank you
thank you for the uh, feedback those who have given their feedback they can leave this session for session 2 the link details uh, will post in whatsapp group as well as through gmail uh, group mail the link is same as the link that we have shared in the scheduled sheet just for your ready reference we are sharing the link again thank you So some participants are asking regarding attendance sheet. Attendance could uh, will take the attendance uh, report directly from the Zoom. No need of explicit attendance, but I request the participants who are using other names, uh, uh, other than the names that are given during registration, they are requested to change the names on the window. So that permission is given to each and every participant. So if uh, somebody is using some numbers, some, some participants are using the registration number, basically, they are requested uh, to use the names that are given during the registration so that for, uh, uh, we can easily track the attendance. We will get the attendance reports from the Zoom, soft, Zoom session directly. No need of explicit attendance. Thank you all.